Quattro. One word associated with all-wheel drive like no other. Unless you are Italian or Spanish, then the word just means four to you. Well, I guess the Germans decided that Audi Fia wouldn't roll off the tongue so nicely. After covering front and rear wheel drives, now is the time to conclude the drivetrain guides. Though for most, driving all-wheel drive is the most intuitive and easy to learn. It allows you to gain speed while drifting and still change the direction of the vehicle, which makes it the most versatile choice in rallying. And is also the reason why all the world competition is running all-wheel drives at the very top. I briefly touched on quattro behavior in the handbrake guide. Make sure to watch that if you haven't already, as I will pick up from there now. What I described as force pulling back then is as straightforward as it sounds. No matter in which situation you are, you can always apply more force to the road as long as one wheel has contact. This leads to drifting becoming fundamentally different. Instead of swinging your butt around with a throttle like in rear wheels, you are actually increasing the radius of your turn with more throttle. And you will gradually transition into straight drive again if you don't change your nose pointing direction. This means the most efficient way to get through the corners is to start the slide, swing until your nose points into the exit direction and then throttle accordingly to keep your car on the road while already gaining speed for the exit. How does that work though? Now in rally what you will drive is most often an all-wheel drive with a total of three differentials, one center and one for each axle. First of all this is different to a 4x4 which is often found in off-road trucks. A 4x4 usually has no center diff and always splits the torque 50-50, which is great for getting unstuck, but not so great for getting all your engine power into actual acceleration. But also, it's different to your usual off-the-shelf all-wheel drive when you buy a stock Subaru or Audi for example, as the road cars tend to have open differentials front and rear and tend to have some kind of vicious torque sensitive diff in the middle, like a torsion differential. You can emulate that with these settings you see here. What this results in is that no axle gets stuck as long as the other has grip, but it can lead to something like this. The right rear has no tire and the left front is unloaded, so both these wheels have little resistance. But since both axle, front and rear are open diffs, no power gets transferred to the wheels which still have grip and you get stuck. In modern cars this is not a game over as your onboard computer would break the spinning wheels, but your rally car doesn't have that. Instead, the diffs are adjustable limited slip differentials and you can set up how much wheel spin difference is allowed per axle and in the center. Apart from giving traction, you can also adjust this to define the car behavior as desired. With a more locking diff in the rear, your car gets more oversteer. More lock in the front gives you more understeer. More lock overall or at the center diff, gives more grip on loose surface, but less on hard surface and vice versa. A locked center diff on hard surface would actually break your drivetrain over time in the real world, but DR2 doesn't simulate that. This is the main benefit of an all-wheel drive, as you can very freely adjust how you want your actual car to behave and adjust it more or less perfectly towards your personal driving style, giving you a lot of variety in setup. And now, honestly, that is it. I can't think of more Quattro advice without repeating something I already covered in another video. So, dragging this out serves no real purpose and would just waste your time. I'll leave you with another quote, again from the legend Walter Röhrl. If you see the tree you are driving into, it's called understeer. 
if you can only hear it, it's oversteer. Until next time, Skull.